All right, welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the 52nd episode of our podcast, but also the very, very, very first episode of the Lifestyle Podcast. The Lifestyle Podcast. I'll say it one more time. The Lifestyle Podcast. <laughs> One-way the lifestyles. Um, so with that being said, you know, before I kind of, you know, go into it more, uh, Mark, do you want to give a quick rundown or a quick spiel in regards to the name change and as well as, like, the, just the rebrand in general? Yeah, man. I mean, you know, as you know, we, we've been talking about this for weeks, possibly months, just trying to figure out what a what a better name would be, you know, for this rebrand. So um, we came up with the Lifestyle Podcast, man. And it's mainly because um, everyone lives life, but, you know, we all live life differently. We all have different styles on which we conduct ourselves and uh, how we conduct business, the things we go through. So figure it's the perfect name. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. Also, too, uh, you know, I know, you know, our new mantra is to pursue challenge and to accomplish, you know, anything within our lifestyle that means importance to us, you know, of great right. importance. Right. So it's right. like really about having to just deal with like the ordeals or like the epitomes of success. But, you know, everything from even the smallest things such as investing or just like learning how to, you know, deal with the toxic family or friend or something like that, you know. So right. we couldn't be longer, so, and we're hoping to have everybody here, obviously, along for the ride and whatnot. Definitely. Um so with that being said, episode 52 and episode one of the Lifestyle Podcast. That's right. Uh, episode, my brother, is uh, the art of cap. <laughs> All right? The art yeah. of cap. So with that being said, um, I kind of wanted to start the show off uh, like this. Um, I'm, I'm interested to hear your perspective on it, but we've, we've covered this pretty much. Yeah, I would say so. We've covered this pretty often over the past uh, several months or just even just in terms of like the amount of time that we've been like having our show run and whatnot. Right. Um, I just kind of need to know what do you think about what do you think about cap in general in terms of like the society that millennials live in? What do you right. think about I'll, okay, so I'll just start off with this. Um, I'll say this. What do you, Mark Pruden, think about the lifestyle that people are currently flaunting on social media? Um, and just how they go about using that to build and live their existence. I'm curious to hear what you have to say. Well, I mean, I mean, it's it's something people value, you know, these uh, just having followers or having, you know, people watching your life. People, people value that, you know, they value the amount of likes that they get, the amount of shares that they get. So um, I would say attention, you know, Gary Vee says this all the time, attention is the new currency. So you know, the more attention that you have on you, the more the more you can do, the more you can create. I mean, we look at people who, who do, you know, jokes and comedy on, on social media. They do one good sketch and they're viral. You know what I mean? So and, and being viral can can do a lot for you in terms of, you know, promotion deals and stuff like that. So there's a good and a bad side to it. You know what I mean? It, it's it's definitely uh, positive and positives and negatives for sure. No, I hear that. I hear that. Um, I know for sure a lot of people have issue or tend to have issue with uh, like, you know, people who may be doing better than them or people who right. see um, on the opposing side of the spectrum and they're, you know, they're flaunting how they're like, how well they're doing and things like that. But those people might not even know that, you know, this person probably lost his grandma a couple of months ago and he's not going to post that, you know? Right. Um, exactly. So maybe, that, you know, maybe he broke up with his girl. So that's why he's out at the club with his boys and they're taking pictures with like four chicks and slapping their ass. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's a fact. No, I'm honest. A lot of that's, people don't eat. That's that. a fact. <laughs> people don't take that into, into consideration. I know I was one of those people. So it's like, it's interesting because we see what they uh, exhibit to us, but we don't really know what's going on inside their heads or their brains or whatever. Right, right, definitely. I mean, social media is just a highlight reel. You know, like you said, no one's going to post their, their their low moments. They're always only going to post the good things that are going on. So if you're scrolling through Instagram and you're comparing yourself to someone's highlight reel, it's just, it, it's not really, uh, it's not fair to yourself because they're not posting the flaws. They're not posting the, the L's, you know? 100%, 100%. Yeah. Um, now that I have you here, because I know you've recently um, engaged in, in, and indulged with the app called Clubhouse. Right. Um, I'm feeling to get on that, brother. Like, I really yeah. want to get my hands on that. I know you sent me an invite, but since I'm an Android user, I can't really, I currently can't connect since I know the, the app itself is still in beta mode. So with that being said, um, you even posted on our stories recently yeah. uh, that, uh, that you were the CEO of GameStop. And, and it was just like, <laughs> a, 
scrolling and whatnot. But it was actually very amusing and entertaining. Could you could you please explain that a bit? Because I think there was a lot of truth to the, to that, and in, in regards right, to like right. what you see on Clubhouse and whatnot. Well, yeah, for sure, bro. I mean, no, Clubhouse is an awesome app. You know, just you know, p- being able to connect with people and and having chat rooms with people that you may never see in person. You know, so it's great for for networking. But um, you know, some people are taking this as like a fresh start, and they're they're rebranding themselves with. Uh, you know, dishonest titles, you know what I mean? Like, um, you, you, go, you go on and you see people that, you know, have no business speaking on certain topics, you know, like portraying themselves as an expert in their field. You know, you see people making up, up titles, you know what I mean? Like, I saw someone, I, I, I was on Clubhouse and I saw someone I knew personally, you know, and they had a, a title on their, you know, their Clubhouse, like psychologist or, or mental health or whatever, and they have no history in that field, you know, it's just something that they're interested in. So it's, it's strange, man. It's strange the way, uh, you know, people are just like making things up and, and, uh, you know, uh, essentially trying to lead people without having the right credentials or knowledge. So it's, it's, it's a lot of, a lot of, but that happens on every app, you know what I mean? It happens everywhere. It's crazy. Do you think that, do you think that essentially hurts us in the long run in terms of developing into the people we would like to become? Well, 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 yeah, I mean, it, it hurts us only if we're, we get caught up and we end up following a leader that was never a legitimate leader. You know, you were following a fraud or, or someone who was, uh, you know, making these, these things up. You know what I mean? Like sometimes you can just get caught up and realize that the person you were looking up to was not, was not ever, you know, legit. Right. I think that's, yeah. that's really good. Um, Man, all right. So this might be kind of interesting. I want to kind of go down the uh, the the lane of um, social media influencers. Um, right. What we see with that is we see a lot of people who are, who are influencers for all types of stuff. Whether it's for like a let's say Fashion Nova, right? You know, dresses and right. uh, being a model, an Instagram model, which has been around for a very long time now, like a, like going on a good decade in, in in about a year or two, or just like you know selling products and you know just pushing merch and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, do you feel as if, do you feel as if like these people who sell, sell these products and whatnot, do you feel as if, um, whatever it is that they're selling is truly a, a, a depiction of who they are as a person? Or do you uh, feel as if a lot of it might be staged or, or, or an act? I'm curious. Well, yeah. I mean, if, if you, if you're a social media influencer and a brand tells you that they're going to pay you. 50 grand to promote their product are you going to say no your product sucks you know what i mean like you're going to take the money so um but that's that's pretty much why i said you know attention is the new currency you know followers is the new currency because if someone asks you you know would you take a hundred thousand dollars or a hundred thousand followers which one would you take right it's like i would take the followers because i'm sure i can extract more than a hundred grand out of those followers you know in terms of selling them a business or service so like, like I said, man, I definitely think that um, it's a new currency. Followers is a new currency. What? Okay, followers are the new, is the new currency, right? And let's say you're a young lady, you're a young girl, and your mind is very impressionable, and you want to be like, you know, these models that you see on Instagram. Right. What if everything down from her hair to her butt is fake? Now what? But what do you mean? What do you, are you saying, like... Uh... If she's trying to sell you this this product, how can you? What I'm, I think what I'm trying to say is, how can you possibly duplicate that? If that's, you know, if they're spending, you know, tens and thousands of dollars for like a, a, a you know, a butt lift, a Brazilian butt lift, or like even just like you know, getting surgery on their on their, I'll just say it on their titties, and like right. you know, you know, you don't even have the means to do that. You're still working at McDonald's. Yeah, that's right. I'm calling it what it is. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, hey, it's. Uh... I mean, of course, it's hard to imitate that if you don't have the capital, but you don't really need, you don't need to get those, uh, those surgeries to, to make money on Instagram. I mean, there's plenty of people, you know, selling the same products without those enhancements. So, you know, as they say, sex sells, regardless of, you know, what it, you know, what the, you know, what the body type is. I mean, there's, there's many different body types on, on Instagram and, you know, people were making money, you know, through that. So I can't really say that every, you know, every girl's getting surgery to, to make money on Instagram. No, I mean, there's from there's girls from all walks of life and all different sizes and shapes making money on Instagram. And 
Same I, thing with guys, you know? No, I think you make a great point, but just coming from my perspective or my background as a teacher, do you think the kids know that? I'm curious. I think they, well, it depends on the age, but I mean, kids, kids are much more intelligent than they were back in our days, man. They, they grow up fast, man. They grow up really fast. So I'm sure they, they have learned of it. Like, it's not like high school kids that don't know that these, a lot of people have, you know, enhancements to their body, you know? Yeah. So it's, it's, it's tough to say, but it does, it causes a confu cute, confusing moment when they're comparing themselves to that and then asking themselves, why can't they look like that? So I see what you're saying on that for sure, man. No, I hear that. Absolutely. Mark Pruden, are these, uh, I know this might sound like a general question, but are these people on social media happy? And what I mean is like, you look at the couples who are often constantly posting like life goals, you know, you know, hashtag bagels, stuff like that. Right. You know, they're out in Cabo, they're out in Dubai, you know, they're, they're, they're traveling, they're doing all of these things. Are these people truly happy with uh, who they are, you know, with their lives because sometimes I wonder if like if, if that's all for the gram like when do you when do you actually walk through life and say this is a candid shot or a candid moment of me actually enjoying my life no it it, it, it makes me wonder like can this even be in 2021 right. because everything seems staged at this point I don't know yeah. I'm just I'm, I'm curious about that yeah it definitely seems like that I mean you know, people post everything. And like we said before, they're posting their highlight reel. They're not really posting their, you know, every single moment of their life. But you got to think about it like a business. Why would you post the negative side? You know, you're always going to post the, the, the side to build your brand and build your, your the perception, you know? So it's like, we can't blame them because who, who would post their, their lowest points, you know, for the world to see? It's like, I don't think it's something that, you know, that, that normal people would do. No, I think you have a great yeah. point. You have a great point. Let's, like, uh, how about you? I mean, it's a bit different with you because sometimes you, you kind of, you're balanced with it. Like, you try to post a good and, you know, some bad, some in between. You, you kind of have a, a good, uh, a good, well rounded, uh, you know, you know, the way you post. It's just pretty well rounded. So, uh, I mean, uh, that's, that's a great point. I even think about that. No, that's true. Um, uh, I think for me, and I think, you know, if there are other creators like myself, um, those of us that are out there that, 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 are, that follow their own purpose or have a specific purpose in terms of like, you know, trans, how do I say this, transferring or communicating a relatable message to the people. I think right. those folks, um, the message that they have in mind happens to be to be honest and to right. just, you know, really try to show people like uh, what life is about if you give them a well-rounded perspective. Um, I think that varies to a certain degree, but I know that, you know, with all the successes that I'm starting to have now in my life, they, they wouldn't be uh, they wouldn't be present if I didn't experience as much loss as I have in the past. So right. I think all of those things play a huge role, like like all those components in the grand scale of things play play a huge role as to where I am now, you know. But um, yeah, but that that's like a, I don't want to say that's like the anomaly, but that's like a few and far in between, I'd say. It, right. It's not you can see that, you know. Right, but so, uh, isn't that, isn't that strategic on your part? Just like some people post the highlights only, you're posting the you know the lower and the lower the middle and the highlights to kind of show people, hey, I'm a well-rounded person, I'm very relatable. So that's a bit of uh, that's a bit of manipulation too, just as much as the um, <laughs> just as much as posting all the right. good stuff. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. It is very strategic, I'd say, and I want all of you to follow me. <laughs> and see what <laughs> no, it's sure, true, um, and I think. I think I'd be a dang fool or I'd be um, uh, a, a delusionist if I said that that wasn't the case. Because I want to see a scene well rounded. I want to be liked. I want to be accepted by the masters or, or, or say if that, or, or if that makes sense. Because I feel as if, um, you know, I, I feel as if I have a role to play. And that role is to inspire and to enlighten. But at the same time, I want to show people like, you know, there's more to every aspect of life. But at the end of the day, I'm selling something. Uh, there's, there's definitely going to be a product or something attached right. to it down the line. That's very, very true. And I say that to say that I'm not an anomaly here and people, I, and I don't want people to think or people to say, well, if you're selling something that I, then like you're a fraud, get out of here. No, even the person who wants to talk to me to talk about my brand is selling something too, because they want to see what they can possibly get out of getting connected with me as well. Right, exactly. I mean, it's all a game. We're all selling something. But if you're on, I mean, but some people are on Instagram and 
Facebook selling nothing. They're just posting just to post. Maybe they just want to want a scrapbook of their life. You know, maybe they just want, um, you know, it's, just, it's, it's, it's the, it could be the modern day version of the scrapbook that our grandma used to pull out showing her showing photos from when she was young. So um, since we don't have, you know, since we don't have these things in, in physical form, possibly social media is functioning as a time capsule. And if if we think about the way our mothers and grandmothers kept their pictures, they didn't have pictures of their worst times. You know, they only had pictures of their best times. So maybe it's a modern day time capsule, just like that scrapbook that grandma used to have, you know? I never thought about it that way. No, that, that's yeah. a great point. That's a real, real great point. Um, excellent. I wanted to pivot the conversation to this topic. I think you, you would have a lot to say in this. Right. And I think a lot of people can actually take a lot from this too. Tax season, we're here. Tax season, we're, we're it's upon us. What do you right. think about tax season as as we embark upon that today, or embark upon that, um, you know, throughout the winter? Balling, balling like I'm calling, like I'm falling the whole time. <laughs> right, you know? um, are we doing any good with tax season every year as 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 a people? I know that sounds very general and that sounds very vague, but. I'm wondering, like, how can we possibly use tax season to better um, our lives and you make it better? But the reason why I ask you that question is because I feel as if tax season or even with the stimulus checks, right, even with the stimulus, you know, they've been coming here and there every couple of months or so. It seems as if, like, instead of investing in terms of, like, building ourselves or bettering our lives, it seems as if it's actually going in the opposite direction instead. I don't know. I'm curious to hear your thoughts about that. Well, yeah, we can jump on tax season first. I mean, if you're truly, if you're truly uh, organizing your finances correctly, you would never receive a large tax return. So, if if you have the right allowances set with your 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 um, your withholding with your job, you shouldn't receive much from your tax return anyway, because that just means that you essentially gave the government a free loan. So. Mm-hmm. It's it's tough to say that, but I mean, yeah, with the way that people handle the the, the tax the tax refunds, I mean, you know, we're always going to be consumers first, you know. So um, people are going to get out of control. They're going to they're going to spend it. They're going to blow it. So it's I they, they may spend it before they get it, and then they have to pay off the credit card that they 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 ran up. So it's like, as people, you know, there's a lot of things we we do as consumers that are that are detrimental to us, you know, and sometimes it's just people trying to, you know, balance their life. If they work a lot, sometimes they want to work hard, play hard, and then it gets out of control. And then it's, it's you know, it's, it's, so it's tough, man. And, you know, life is short and um, some people just want to enjoy the fruits of their labor instead of, you know, saving it for the next generation. So That's it's, it's a, a tough call. Yeah. Point. I'll be honest, I want some Balenciagas. Them right, right. Are <laughs> I really want the Balenciagas, but I'm not spending a, a, a rack for them. I know that much. Right, right. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? They look great and they look very neutral in terms of like being very, uh, like not under the radar, but like, you know, like, like the black and white high tops, you know, it's like you could actually do a lot of, a lot with that in terms of an outfit, yeah. but you know, you're not going to spend a thousand, eleven hundred dollars for, for Balenciagas. You know what I'm saying? But it ties back into social media. You know, you want to look good for the people. You want to put on your own highlight reel. So and if you buy them, there's no way you're not taking a picture for, for the gram. You're not going to take a picture with the, with the belt and the shoes. You know, like you have to, you know, especially if you're not used to that kind of uh, luxury. When you get a piece of it, you're like, yo, I'm showing everybody. I'm, I'm going to tuck my shirt in real tight so they can see my belt. You know what I mean? So it's like... It's it's really tough, man. You know, it's it's just a revolving door between social media and our spending and media in general. I mean, it's it's so correlated. It's it's amazing, man. Yeah, I feel as if um, I feel as if like with everything going on right now, like like again, like with 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 with, with that, you know, people are just spending to look good and whatever, whatnot. You know, which kind of like brings me to my uh, next and I guess final topic of um, you know, t- today's episode. Um, you know, regarding the art of cap is, um, right. you know, the capping for uh, uh, male or female attention. I, I kind of wanted to streamline the conversation in that direction now. You already know what this is. This is Valentine's Day weekend. 
<laughs> so, you know, there's going to be a lot of cap involved in terms of, like, people trying to uh, impress, like, you know, a girl they might be trying to holler at or, like, their 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 first time booze. Maybe this might be their first Valentine's Day. And I remember you sent me a, um, it was you actually who sent me a clip last Valentine's Day or somewhere, some, sometime around Valentine's Day where uh, uh, that cat, Prince Donnell, was talking on an IGTV video about uh, Valentine's Day and, like, the, like the, just the just the cap in it itself in terms of, like, they want you to, to overspend, overspend, and, and consume yeah. whatever, whatnot. What do you think about that? Do you think people are going above and beyond and out of their way to, like, overdo, like, for these holidays, such as a Valentine's Day and for Christmas or whatever? Because I'll be honest with you right now. If my girl don't know that I love her with, like, this little small tiny heart balloon and, like, this little tiny pot of a plant, you don't deserve to be in my life. <laughs> and wherever yeah. you are right now, I'm letting you know that right now. <laughs> right, but you know what, man? These holidays are so, you know, ingrained in our culture that you can be wrong for not participating. You know what I mean? What do you, you can mean? be explain, expound on that. Like you can, you can truly get yourself in trouble. You know, if you let's say you're in a relationship and you let a few holidays pass and you're not really participating in anything, she's not feeling special. Everybody at work got a, got a necklace. Everybody at that school got a got a ring, but um, yeah, yeah, we're saving money, you know, we're we're investing. You know, it sounds boring. It sounds boring. It sounds when you're comparing to everything around you, it it doesn't feel that good, you know. So not only are you being marketed to via social media ads and you know commercials on television, you're being marketed to from the people around you. You know, there, there's a reason why there's a brand on everything. It's, it's, it's so you can be the billboard. So we right. essentially guilt each other into spending more. Oh, yeah, man, Kev just got his girl uh, a, a necklace. Man, uh, am I not going to get anything? You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to get anything for mine. So it's like you start to compare. So it's, so, it's interesting. And, you know, if any of the ladies are, are still here in the chat, if you're, if, you know, if you have a man or you had a man, if he didn't get you anything for Valentine's Day and said, babe, it's all about the love of just being together. Would you be okay with that? I'm, I'm very curious on this IG Live tonight and also this yeah. episode of the Lifestyle Podcast. Would you be okay with a man saying, you know, telling you in advance, I'm not going to get you anything and um, I love you dearly and forget this holiday. I love you every day. Every day is Valentine's Day. Would that be okay? Is that something a woman would truly appreciate and say, all right, that's fine? Or do you appreciate physical gifts like physical gifts I, I mean i know like they have like you know these love languages and things of that nature but i'm curious is like does your man need to show your appreciation of love with physical gifts and physical materials I'm, i don't know it's, it's something um i think uh we don't talk about often and yeah. um i think it's something that we need to have a conversation about i'm gonna be honest with you a girl with a girl could be with me for dang near a, a year straight maybe eight months 12 months 13 months I'm not giving you shit till I feel like giving you something. <laughs> what the? What the? <laughs> I'm just being honest. I'm not giving you shit until I feel like being something. I'm the I'm the I'm the I'm the I'm the jewel here. I'm I'm the wow man. I'm I'm the I'm the czar. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? I'm the prize. So if you are worth it and you do something for me that shows that you have value in this relationship. Sure, I'll you know do a little splurge for you here and there, but I'm not. I won't even hold the car door for you. Like, wait, what? No, I'm not doing any of that. I won't even hold the car door for you. The fact that I picked you up, I told you I was gonna be here at two. I got there at one fifty nine, one fifty eight. That shows that as much as a gentleman I am, because you know what? Because you will go and you will un you will not appreciate. And I've had this happen to me in the past. You okay. will not appreciate when I make. Uh, breakfast or lunch and bring it to your job for you to enjoy. After a while, you're going to start taking me for granted. That's just my perspective. I could be totally wrong, but that's how I feel. But I'm not going to get to give you shit because the more you give people, especially women, things in excess, I feel as if the more they start to depreciate or lessen that value. I mean, that's just something I've seen. At least. Well, okay. I can, I can see what you're saying on that. But, um, well, I think doing special things randomly or doing special things once in a while are great but i understand what you're saying if you if you um 
What am I trying to say? So if you start something and you start to do it on a routine, right? You know what I mean, bro? Like you're doing something on a routine and you stop. They're going to notice that you stop. So why, why, would you do, why would you be so consistent with something that you can't hold up forever? Well, that's you know very I mean? true. So I feel like doing stuff every, every once in a while is great. And doing, you know, doing special things every once in a while is great. You're doing something special every day for a week. You got to plan right. to do that for the next 50, 52 weeks, you know, or 51 weeks. You know, so it's just like you got to kind of have the consistency and then sprinkle something on it every now and then. But I don't know. I mean, everybody's got their different perspective on it, man, for sure. Imam says What's you have to uh, Imam, Imam, I hope I pronounced it right. Um, shout out to you. You said that we have to, you have to keep the same energy. Um, I, I'll let you answer this. I don't. <laughs> no, it, it's true. It's, you got If you're going to start something, you got to keep it up. Why, if you're going to start something and then you're going to slowly fizzle away, they're going to, no. they're going to, all right, well, it was a little, let me know. Uh, I know. Well, the see. moment you're, I'm the prize here as the man. The moment your energy drops, my energy is dropping considerably, <laughs> considerably, considerably. Why? And I'll tell you why. A woman can't walk around and say, hey, he's going to marry me when I want him to, or he's going to do this, he's going to do that. No, I'm the one who's, who, who buys the ring, right? I'm the one who's going to get down on one knee, right? The bad knee I already have. I've, I've, I've messed this up considerably and then proposed to you. So with that being said, if I'm going to do that, um, you know, whether it's cooking, cleaning, or just being there when I need you to, I'm not asking for much. I'm just saying, like, you know, show me support, you know, uh, um, you know, if I let's say if I want to do a give back community event for Thanksgiving, I want to give out 100 mass turkeys, turkeys. If you're not saying, hey, how could I possibly help, babe? How can I possibly like help, you know, distribute these turkeys? Is there anything you need? You know, men, we're not really that good sometimes with organization and planning and things of that nature. We just know how to execute the vision. So if you can go out of your way to help me do things like that and, and, and be a part of my business or my blueprint, my agenda and what I have going on, that's what I'm looking for. Yes, remember, you're right. Kevin Samuel says men control access to relationships. We do. That's 100%. true. That's okay. That's true because, of course, we have to get on the. We have to get on one knee. We have to buy the ring. We have to. You know, we we are. I mean, we have a lot of the access. We have a lot of the control. But I think there's got to be some equality there. You know what I'm saying? So when when I say that. No, no, explain equality, because I don't believe in equality anymore. Go ahead. I'm 30 now, so I, I, I'm over that shit. Go ahead. Let me right, know what you right. got to say. I believe that it's a team. Like, you know, everybody has their own perspective, right? Do you believe that, you know, you said you're the prize, you're in charge. So yes. she's, you, you believe that she's serving you. She's uh, catering to you. But I, I'm more of like a team guy. I like to I like to build a team where we're both building together. So... Mm -hmm. Read that. I'm not going <laughs> to. Right. So she says, um, one of one of my family friends, oh, the woman proposed to the man. Yeah, that's interesting. That's interesting. That should never happen. That should never happen. It's, it's man, we're living in a different society where uh, things things are happening, man. There's, there's many different, it's not something I would be, you know, open to, but this is a different world, Kev. I mean, you got crazier things happening than that. You know what I mean? Which we won't get into. But, um, right. I mean, I, that, that wouldn't really, that wouldn't be good for me. But so, that, I'm sure that guy was happy. Well, <laughs> I'm, glad we agreed, I'm glad we agreed upon that. Because if a woman proposed to me in the midst of a family brunch or dinner and everyone around, I'd walk away. I'd just walk out. But think about this, bro. Okay, go ahead. That would never happen to you because the woman would already know who you are in that relationship. In the relationship that uh, Iman is talking about, what she maybe, she, maybe she wears the pants in the relationship and she knew that she was going to be the one to get on that knee and maybe he's a submissive guy. Maybe he's the one uh, cleaning and you know, may, you know what I mean? Like it could be a switched role there because there's a lot of, there's a lot of women that are a bit dominant. So you make a great point. I she got on point. that, she got on that knee because she knew he would be open to that. No, you make you know a great I mean? point. Um, it's just like, no, it's that, it's a know your personnel type of thing. She knew that her, her man was going to be uh, open to that. No, no, you make a great point. Yeah. You make a great point. To kind of piggyback off of what uh, Imam said, I, 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 I kind of want to throw this in there. 
I don't, I don't know, man. I think the older I get now and the older I'm growing, I don't think, you know, God willing, I do get engaged one day because I would like to get engaged um, and get married, obviously, you know, and have a, and start a family, have a family. I don't think I post that to social media. I, I, I mean, I think I did. I think I was going to before, but now that I'm, you know, I just turned thirty. I, I feel as if I'm getting a whole sense, like a, a whole bunch of clarity, just you know, just being bestowed upon me. You know, what I'm saying, you know, just by God and just by just like, you know, being uh, just very in tune with my spirit, being very in tune with what I what I think God is trying to tell me. I don't know, man. I don't. I don't think so, bro. I don't think. Um, I don't think that would be me if I'm just being a hundred percent honest with you. I mean, hey, I it depends I on. And I don't even think if I have a kid, I want to put my kid on social media. Okay. Okay. I mean, I, I I feel you on that. I mean, I was I was gonna post mine. You know, I was gonna post the uh, the engagement pic. Just put it out there. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think because, but I was trying. I was pl- planning something pretty pretty big. So when it goes down, that's a movie. You know what I mean? But everybody doesn't need to be involved, man. You know, it's, right. sometimes it's healthier to just uh, keep it to yourself, for sure. No, 100%. 100%. That makes a lot of sense, actually. Um, no, I, I totally get what you're saying. Um, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm, I mean, I guess I'm kind of just, like, in between, but I don't know. Uh, I mean, I'll be honest with you. I think it kind of even goes to, um, you know, with women that I've dated in the past, like, having issues with me because of, the fact that I wouldn't post them to social media or like I wasn't posting right. them enough. And I'm gonna be honest with you. Before I used to just do it, just to do it, but it never was genuine. Like I didn't just post you because I felt like it and I wanted to. Right. And at this point in my life, I could be in a happy relationship, like happy, content, whatever, whatnot. I'm not gonna post you if I don't feel like it, which probably right. probably moving forward will be never. Maybe I'll put you on a story, or whatever, but I don't think I wanna post you. So just to have that privacy, and you know what I've been through. I've obviously I've been stalked, I've been ridiculed the whole nine. You know, I dealt with a really crazy ex girlfriend, um, and I learned a lot from that. But I'll be honest with you, brother. Um, women seem to seek validation from like pictures. Like, right. bro, I'm not gonna put anyone on the spot here, you know, but I'm gonna say it for what it is. I've heard before in the past. Well, go to Mark, pull up Mark's profile. Pull up Mark's profile. Is Mark's girlfriend there? Oh. Yeah. So how come I'm not there? Because me and Mark are not the same guy. If I don't right, want to post right. it, post it. Like, it, like, what's the big deal? Like, I just don't feel like it. Yeah, I feel as if you're hiding something because you don't want to have me up there. You're embarrassed of me. It's like, it's not that. I just want to just, like, keep it to myself. It's not a big deal. Oh, so you think you're a celebrity now. You think you're a celebrity with, with a measly 900 followers. You better stop disrespecting me because I'm not <laughs> what I'm talking about right now. But, it may, but this is what I'm saying, bro. Like, I feel as if, like, again, going back to the art of capping, like, if it's genuine, like people will see it in real life. They don't need to see it over a virtual, uh, uh, digitized amalgamation of what they think that you or I are. I don't know. It's just crazy to me, to be honest with you. Yeah, I mean, yeah, man. People want people want physical proof, man. They want you to put the proof and put it out there. Me, I don't, I don't do the whole posting thing often, man. I think I I used to back a couple of years back, but it's not, it's seriously not my thing. I mean, I. The people that follow us on social media, what are like two, two, three percent of them are actually close friends. So why am I going to post my personal business to to all of my followers? I see what you're saying, man. It really there's no there's really no reason for it to for us to post it. But women like it. They do like to see that. Some do. Some like to see that validation. Yeah. And you, that's not something you're willing to compromise with. You're just like, you know, you wouldn't do it at all. Right. She can post me. Right. I'm not going to post her. Like that. Hey, and that's real, man. That's real. She that's can her post choice. me. I have no problem with her posting me. Shoot, post me. I'll reshare it on my on my stories. <laughs> gotcha. but I, don't think, I don't think I'm going to. But a lot of people might say what you're saying, Kevin, is, and, and she said this. A lot of people might say what you're saying, Kevin, is bullshit. A lot of people might say that, like, you're, 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 you're hiding something. There's something that you're hiding, or you want to look like a single man, whatever, whatnot. All right, all you feminists, attack me, Dairy Queens. I love it. Take it. Whatever. <laughs> but look, this is my truth. This is what I feel. Um, and Mem says, we like posting what we got for Valentine's. I, yeah, I, don't think I, I, I think there's nothing wrong with that at all. I, look, whatever makes women happy, I think is fine. I just feel as if, like, there is, there are different languages women and men speak. 
when it comes to showing love and affection and how that goes about. Um, my boy here, my boy Larry from 5TC Athletics, he, he wrote something. I don't know if you want to read it, Mark. Yeah, he said, uh, no way a man should let their woman take a knee and propose. That's a sign something is off in that relationship. Yeah, yeah. Like, maybe the roles switch there. We don't know. Maybe, you know, but but something is different. You know, something. What do you think about that, Kev? Look, bro. I don't care about names at this point in my life. I want all the smoke. I want all the trouble. I don't give a shit. <laughs> so with that being said, if this was Mia, and you, you know, you know who that was. She <laughs> would have got on one knee. Okay. And um, I think she still follows me to this day. So if you're checking out this podcast, hi. I know you would. I know you would get on the knee. Okay. That sounds awkward. He's like, Kevin, hey, what's wrong? Yo, Kevin is crazy today. <laughs> yeah, you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey man, man. I'm, just, I'm just being honest, man. I'm just I'm speaking my truth. That's what I think. Um, I I feel as if a woman like her and look. Look, I can, you know why I can speak about this more? Because I've been through a crazy relationship where a woman like her was stalking me. I know what that was like. Mm. I know what it was like. And, and, and I feel as if, like, if going back to what, what Larry said, if a woman is going to propose in a relationship, something is off with her, man. She's not all right in the brain. Mm. You, have to, you have to respect tradition. You have to respect tradition. If you are getting on one knee, either something's wrong with you or you're very desperate as a woman. You need to be courted. It shouldn't be the other way around. Mm, I need to feel like the works. hunter. I need to feel like the hunter, not the gatherer, you know? Um, <laughs> okay. I'm being real. Uh, right. And then, uh, let's see. She says, I feel some people just aren't, I feel some people just aren't traditional like that anymore. That's probably true. I, I wouldn't really know. I mean, That's look, true. I'm, not, I'm not really talking from experience like that, so I definitely wouldn't know. Um, she said the guy was fine with her proposing. Huh, what do you think about that, Mark? Oh, wow, I mean, I don't... I but that's really... like we said, it's a different world, man. Like you, you said, you know, tradition needs to stay, but this world is really straying away from tradition in all aspects of life. So it's, we're going to see different things like that. It's it's tough, It's you know, it's tough for us to, to understand, but it's normal so to Mark, her. No... So, Mark, so, Mark, I'm going to put you on the spot, brother. So you mean to okay. tell me it's going to be okay if... uh. Uh, um, uh, Deshaun pulls up to Sarita's place and um, no, no, no. Matter of fact, I take that back, scratch that. It's going to be okay if Sarita pulls up to Deshaun's place and says, hello, my good man, your chariot awaits. And then like she rolls out a red carpet for him to hop in the, the limousine. Like that, there, there's something wrong with that, I think. She's got to be crazy. She's got to be one of those Idris Ilba chicks in one of those crazy uh, thriller Murder mystery. Like, there's no way, brother. There's no way. There's no way. Maybe the role switch. We don't know, man. It's it's tough to say, man. I can't knock it. I mean, sure, it's not something I would want to be uh, a part of, but the way things are changing so much in society, man, nothing surprises me now. You know, there's this, this, there's things like that happening all the time. Would you consider that relationship controlling? Absolutely. <laughs> Any man that allows a woman to pick him up for dinner or allows a woman to, you know, get on one knee, you know, what I personally feel as if, I feel as if that man, not saying he's not a man, I'm not going to say that because I don't know his upbringing, you know what I'm saying? But what I will say is I don't think that man had traditional upbringing or raising in learning how to become a man by having a father or an uncle or a strong male presence in his life. That's how I feel. But again, everything I could be saying, it could be totally like taboo and wrong. <laughs> I'll be 100% honest with you. Um, but that's just what I feel. I mean, that, that, that's my thought on it. Like, my, like, if I told my dad, you know, God rest his soul, because my dad's not here on this earth anymore. But if I told my dad now, like if my dad was alive today, I said, hey, dad, um, I really like this new girl, and um, you know, I think we're gonna go steady. And he's like, "All right, cool, son, great, great for you, cool." Um, so, what's going on? Are you guys dating? Like, yeah, we're dating. You know, we've been going out on dates and stuff. Cool. So, like, where have you taken her? Um, well, Dad, it's not really where I have taken her. It's where she's taken me. My dad will look at me with the most utter look <laughs> disgust on his face. Like, what do you mean taking you? You should be taking her places. Boy, what are you talking about? And my dad, we took girls out. Boy, we didn't let girls take us out. Like, my dad had so much pride in him as a man that if my mom, like, brought, like, brought home, uh, 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 you know, like, laid down the rose petals and stuff like that, and he had to close his eyes and walk through, she, she, like, you know, he'd, like, have a problem with that. Like, he would be like, yo, like, 
That's a bitch move. <laughs> hey, man. Yeah. It's do you guys do you guys feel pressured around Valentine's? Uh, you want me to go first, Mark, answering that yeah. question? Yeah, go ahead, man. Yes, I do. <laughs> it's it's I'll true. Be, I mean, I'll be completely honest. Um, I hope the 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 woman in my life doesn't watch this, but uh, yes, I do. Um, and the reason because is because um, you know, it's hard trying to um progress and 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 better and improve your life when and what i mean by that i know that's about a bit vague okay i'll put it to you like this it's hard trying to pro improve your life uh financially and um you know socially whatever the case may be just trying to level up in life when you're like oh man like i'm like 300 or 400 dollars away from paying off my credit card debt but I gotta, I, I gotta go all out this weekend, but it's because it's Valentine's Day, I might have been one weekend away from officially crushing my credit card debt, and now my credit card, my credit score is back in seven eighty, seven hundred, seven ninety, whatever the case may be. But because of the fact that the holiday has trained us that if your man is not doing what he needs to do on Valentine's Day, he's not a good man, especially when they go into the office on Monday morning and like, oh, so what did Clyde get you? What did blah blah blah? Right. Oh, he got you this. Yeah, that, that won't be a good Monday or Tuesday morning for you, man. It's just it just won't. So it's it's pressure. I definitely feel pressure. What about you, Mark? Well, yeah, man. I don't feel any pressure. Um, it's it's. I, but that's the thing. Like I said, man. If it's a team, there is no pressure on one side to do any one thing. You know what I mean? Like, of course, I know I've got to do something special just to, uh, you know, make sure I take care of things that day. But I'm not going to go all out to the point where I'm delaying goals for it you know what i mean like it's if 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 one if me and her are on the same page financially where we know what the goals are she's not going to want anything that as extravagant to to delay any financial goals that we have in place you know so I, it's just like is that person on board with your mission or are they not you have some people that would be willing to accept a gift knowing that it would have you know destroyed you financially hundred percent, hundred percent. And, you know, we don't want to uh, keep um, the show going on too long tonight because we want to be very respectful of other people's time. So if any of, uh, of you that are on are still on have any more questions, please be sure to add them now because uh, Mark and I will take these final questions and comments and we'll answer them. So please, if you feel as if you have a couple more, you know, share them. We're not rushing, but, you know, we want to be very respectful of time. here. Mark, I'm going to take the first one and you can read the second one. Uh, the first one is from my boy, Larry. He's still out here holding it down with us. He says, do you feel that the woman who proposed respected that man as a man? Ooh, Larry, that's a good question, brother. Mark, I'll, I'll let you answer that one first. I mean, that's tough, man. What, what are we saying a man is? Like, what are we saying? That's a good question. Um, I don't know if you have something for that, Larry. You can respond. Maybe, maybe, maybe she respected him as a partner and not the head of the household. You know what I mean? Maybe she thought of herself as head of household. You know what I mean? So, if she thought of herself as the head of the household, it won't work. For it's you. But that's for you. Maybe he's okay with that. Maybe he's okay with having her be the leader while he steps back. He may it's be okay with that. With Imam, huh? let me talk to this guy, Imam. I want to talk to this guy. Something's wrong with him. Tell him to DM me because I, I don't, I don't <laughs> I really don't, man. I'm sorry. I don't. I want to have a conversation with him. I don't think it's right. right. I don't think it's right. And I don't think he will be happy 20, 30, 40, 50 years down the line. Who's to say that, though? It, I mean, he said yes, right? He said yes for, for the moment. But think about it. Divorce rates, 80%. Women are filing for divorces, especially black women. Okay. Who knows? Mark is like Kevin. Shut, shut the hell up, man. No, <laughs> I no, I get it, man. I get it because um, I'm, there's there's dominant women out there, and there's submissive men. Maybe that was a match. Maybe okay. that was a match, I mean, man. You're probably right. I submissive man. That is going back to our conversation last week um, or two weeks ago from uh, episode fifty. I don't like the term submissive man or like a man having to acquiesce or conform to a woman's standards but uh it just i don't know it just it grinds my gears a bit but i, I hear what you're saying i mean, I mean that might be, maybe it's just not good for me and i because right. i know who i am so i just have to accept that right that because i breed parrots right or i used to have a, a large breeding facility so when i have a parrot with a very dominant female i can't put her with a dominant male they're gonna fight 
if I have a dominant female, I'm going to take the most submissive male I have and pair them. So it's, it's, it's just about matching, man. It's just about, you know, matching personalities and matching different uh, temperaments. So I, I really think it, it may work. It may just work. He, he may be submissive to the point, or he may think of it as, you know, she's head of household, she's the more dominant one, and he's just falling back. Right. And he probably saved himself 20 grand on that ring, 20, 30 grand. <laughs> so. You want to read the other comment from Emem, the one prior to the one just now, the one that said it's terrible? I don't know if you have to scroll up to see it. Yeah, but. We'll see. yeah. Emem said it's terrible that men have to feel like they need to go into debt for gifts, though. Something small should be enough. For some... You know, for some women, it's enough. Some, I mean, it's you got some people that would be pissed off at a small gift or a small, you know, small item. So it's it's really tough. You know, it depends on who you're with. Do what you, do you think, think about that? Do you think? Um, well, I'm gonna say this. I'm wondering if time has to do with that. Like, if we've been together for five, six, seven years, maybe the more time spent together, the more the gift value or the more the price of the gift is that's expected from the woman. Maybe I don't know. Um, I don't know, that's something to think about, but look, if I'm not a millionaire, my gifts will range between $50 and $200 at all times. They yeah. just win. I don't see anything wrong with that. The, the ring, the ring when, I, when I give you the ring, that'll be the first big splurge. But prior to the ring, anything will be between 50 to 250 300 at best. You're at building. Least. You're building. I get it. Yeah, Larry says, good point, Brother Mark. I was going to ask, was the relationship you men brought up interracial? Because then that makes sense. Oh, yeah, because uh, she said that, uh, full disclosure, this couple is white in regards to the getting down on one knee um, as the woman to the man. Oh, interesting. Hmm. That's very interesting. I, I, I don't know if I really have an answer for that then because I think that's something I can relate. I know for sure, though, if it was a brother, I'd tell that brother to DM me. We'd have to talk. I, I, I'd have to give him, I, I'd have to book him for my consultation and we'd have to talk for about a good hour. Like, I, I don't know if I would be okay with that. Um, but, and I'm not saying that to, to like, 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 like shit against people or anything like that. But I feel, I feel as if um, white couples or, you know, white partners have a different lens or perspective when it comes to looking at relationships. And I only, I'm only saying this, um, not from personal experience, but from an outer view experience, if that makes sense, just from like dealing with them within the workplace and hearing how, you know, um, you know, we combined our last names and stuff like that. Like, like that's actually happened. Like I actually knew a Jewish couple uh, when I used to work at Queensborough Community College that combined their last names together, meaning like half of this person's last name, the man and half of the woman's last name became, became combined. So that way, like they could have a combined last name. It was like truly odd. I've never seen or experienced anything like it, but it was pretty interesting though, the way it played out. And, but it was more so that the Jewish man, the Jewish male was being more submissive to the idea of going, undergoing that change of value system or tradition. It was interesting, but. Oh well, yeah, definitely. Tradition is always very flexible. So um, you're going to have people that bend a little bit and switch things up. But like we said, I mean, it all depends on the individual, it depends on what, you know, what their personality and temperaments are like. So. It makes sense. Yeah. yeah. All right. I, I mean, I think that's pretty much it. I don't think we have any other questions. Uh, do you have a message or um, a general point? Because, you know, we haven't really uh, figured out our new segment that will be similar to the words of the wise yet for the lifestyle podcast, but we'll figure it out as time goes on. But with that being said, do you have a general message or um, um, a final uh, uh, talking point that you want to leave the listeners with uh, today, brother, in regards to, you know, capping and just trying to figure out how to, you know, balance and, and, and be authentic within life itself as we uh, progress and move on? I mean, yeah, I think when it comes to anything in life, uh, just find your why, you know, find out why you're doing something. If you're posting on Instagram just to have a, a time capsule or a scrapbook of life, that's cool. You know, then, then there's nothing wrong with posting your highlights. You know, if you're if you're posting to gain enough followers to possibly monetize your your platform, that's great, too. You know, if, you, if you're posting to keep up with family and just exchange, you know, you know, just updates, that's cool, too. But if you're if you're posting for, you know, valid, you know, validation or or trying to compete with your fellow follower or you're just trying to constantly compare yourself to your newsfeed and trying to outdo people, then 
you know, you're doing yourself a disservice, man. Like, it's just not healthy for you to, to be comparing yourself to your news feed and, and, and posting, trying to show off or whatever the case may be. It's just, 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 just whatever it takes to make yourself happy, man, because you, you're never going to be happy if you're competing with an unlimited news feed of a thousand people and all of their highlights. You're going to get exhausted and you're going to go broke in the process. No, I agree. I agree 100%. Yeah. I, I agree 100% with what you're saying. Um, and I think that um, it's easier said than done to, like, not cap and not to, like, lie and, um, you know, like, uh, yo, even me, man, we all lie. We all, like, make it seem as if our lives are greater than what it is or, like, we're doing much more than is expected. Right. Um, but at the end of the day, man, I think, you know, I think that's just become the world, uh, you know, and, 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 one thing I'm, trying, I'm starting to learn, I learned this actually from you, Mark. Um, one thing I'm starting to learn is that you can't, you can't judge someone or you can't, you can't have a certain perception against somebody because like they, like they're showcasing a certain aspect of their life or what they're trying to portray. Like at the end of the day, like they have as much right to whatever it is that they want to portray as you do, because at the end of the day, when you clicked on those uh, terms of service agreements to become an Instagram member or a clubhouse member, they're allowed to do whatever it is that you're just as about allowed to do too. So if you don't yeah. like it, just move on. Focus on whatever it is that you got to move on. Focus on whatever it is that you got to that you got to do. But I will say this though: I think if there are things out there that people don't like, like, or if there are people or there are people who are frauds that are out there that people don't agree with or they don't feel as if they're acquiring any value from them, I think it's all trial and error. And the last message I want to leave with is I think it's important that we as a people, um, you know, with that trial and error intact, I think you just got to just keep finding, just keep plucking, just keep plucking through and keep plucking by until you find that person or you gravitate towards uh, that group of people that are actually authentic and that are doing what it is that you as well hope to do or want to do, you know, they're legit. That's, that's, all, that's the way I look at it. I don't know. Yeah, for sure. No, I'm totally with you. Um, it's just, I guess it's all about balance, man. Just, uh, trying to find that balance because even me, I, um, you know, when I was on social media, I found myself comparing and comparing and comparing. So I, I went ahead, I realized that, you know, social media was the cause of, you know, the disruption to my day or, or, you know, you know, like just negative, a negative influence on my day. So I ended up muting my entire timeline. Everybody that, that I followed, I muted. So I only saw what I wanted to see which was investing right. stuff and stuff like that. But then after a while, you realize as the time goes by, you missed out on a lot. You know, you missed out on certain things that you may have wanted to see. Like, oh, man, I wanted to, oh, my, my boy from high school had a kid. Man, that's crazy, man. Now the kid is three. You, you just never knew. You never knew to congratulate people on certain things. You never knew to connect with certain family members based on certain things they posted. So I think a little social media is good. Right, right, yeah. right. Agreed. Um, and if we could read the final um, point by Larry, and you could you know expound upon it if you want. Um, he says another great point, brother Mark, on that as oh, well. Sure. I asked those questions as I evolved, and I realized that I was posting for the wrong reasons. And honestly, I just deleted my personal account as a result of it. Man, that's that's real, man. That's real. Um, the day I I because I, I did the same thing a while back, just deleted my Facebook and Instagram just to. Uh, just focus back on myself, man. Those are the happiest things ever, man. It's just, you, you, you just, once you cut off from all that, you know, comparing and seeing people's highlights in their life, you kind of just focus on yourself, man. And then you kind of just, you re reevaluate. It's like your mind kind of refreshes and it's almost like a burden has been lifted off, lifted off of your back. But unfortunately, man, it's like, it's a tool now. It's a tool that we, we kind of need, you know, to like right now, we're not able to connect with family as much. It's good to see my little cousin on, on Facebook pop up playing with her toys. You know what I mean? So it's like it it is a tool that's effective when used when used moderately. Yeah. So it's just tough, man. That's that's a great point, man. I am I'm, I'm glad that uh, you know, he saw the he saw the problem and went ahead and attacked it and now he's he's gonna experience you know more positive lifestyle, man. Because social media can be crazy sometimes. That's a fact. That's a fact. Yeah. Um and 
at this point, man, I think we've almost hit that hour mark or just about. So, you know, I think we definitely should cap it at this because, you know, when it does come out as a, a podcast episode on all streaming services, you know, I want, you know, people to get as much gems as possible, but also not to, you know, uh, kind of wither away from the conversation. So, right. um, wow, this was a great convo today, brother. I think we, uh, you know, the, you know, you know, the former, you know, because we haven't come up with a new name yet, but the former wise community got a lot of gems out of this. And I think they'll be able to take a lot out of this moving forward, you know, as we continue to do these wise chats and, you know, as we continue to build our new brand, which is the Lifestyle Podcast. Um, and, you know, from now and in, infinity until beyond, you know, um, Buzz Lightyear, Toy Story. But yeah. You know, you, <laughs> yeah um, but with that being said, brother, um, always a pleasure talking to you. Shout out to Imem um, for holding it down with a lot of good points tonight. On this Same to you, my good brother, um, Larry, as well. Of oh, five yeah. Okay. Right, uh, for sure. Also, for sure. you know, shameless plug, shameless plug, shameless plug, because even if people aren't seeing this, they're going to hear this on the podcast in general. All right. Mm -hmm. Please be sure to Google and to look up 5TC Athletics. They oh, are, yes. actually, they actually, you know, thanks to my brother Larry, they actually are our sponsors when it comes to our gear. When you think about the Wise Guys uh, merch and, and whatnot. So, with that being said, the Wise Guys. Um, stay wise cap and as well as like you know the merch that we've been putting out you know through Flower Concrete you know 5TC Athletics has been a huge part in getting all of that together so please be sure to check out 5TC Athletics online all right please be sure to do so and um, sometime I think in a couple of weeks or so you know it'll be spring so we will be you know rolling out some because we haven't sold any mark right we will be rolling out some stay wise caps as official gear so obviously you know we're not staying wise anymore but <laughs> Because it'll be like um it'll be like those old classic uh throwback hardwood jerseys. It'll be it'll be a you know, it'll be an antique. It'll be it'll be dope. I mean at the end of the day, that phrase is universal, man. I don't see why anyone should stop staying wise. You know what I mean? Right. So it's all good, man. Keep it rolling. Put them in production, man. <laughs> Let's do it. hundred percent. Um so with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back next week, Saturday. Um, I know we did a, we did this wise chat today on Friday because, you know, I had something or ha I have something more so planned for next Saturday for, well, tomorrow Saturday, excuse me, which is why we're doing it on fri um, Friday tonight. But right. next week we'll be back to our usual Saturday throughout the month of uh, February. Um, when you finally hear this um, through the, 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 the streaming platforms. It'll obviously come out in March, but nonetheless, we appreciate you all. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for staying wise. We'll find the new slogan soon, but you have been tuning in to the Lifestyle Podcast. This is the guy, Kevin Unglad. This is Mark Pruden. Stay tuned. More Lifestyle Podcasts to come. We'll see you next week for episode 52. We out. All right, cool. Good stuff, My brother. Man. I appreciate you, man. Have a good one. No doubt, man. Good night. All right, good night to you too. We'll talk. All right, cool. Peace.